Welcome back to another week of the AD Robles YouTube channel. Now, before we begin, let me just say this. My son uh, wanted to help me advertise. He came into my office and he gave me this sign. He wants me to hang it up, and well, I will do that. And it says books for sale. Books for sale. And so I, uh, of course, he's talking about the latest release, Social Justice Pharisees, Woke Church Tactics, and how to engage them. It is only available for me right now. And so if you're interested in getting a copy or two or three or six, I even had somebody uh, want to buy six copies, um, email me, ad at adrobles.com, ad at adrobles.com. Let me know how many you want and all of that kind of thing. <laughs> a lot of people have been making fun of me because that's one of my ticks. Definitely true. I always say it. Um, but if you do want a copy, ad at adrobles.com, let me know how many you want, and I will send you an invoice these are shipping out uh, immediately. I have a long list of people that I've uh, that people that pre-ordered, people that ordered, and all of, they're going to go out in the next couple days, so you'll have uh, instant access to it. I think you're going to really enjoy the book. Like I've been saying, it, it still has the same um, personality that I have, although it's toned down just a little bit so that you can feel more comfortable giving it to people that you know maybe not wouldn't want to watch my channel. I know I know it can be a little hardcore sometimes. That Eric Mason video from last week, I believe every word. In fact, I believe I wasn't harsh enough with that nonsense that Eric Mason was spewing. He had the tears, he pretending to cry and all that kind of stuff. It, it, I thought about that video a little bit more. Maybe we'll talk about that in a second, but that was an evil video where he pretended to cry and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, but yes, books for sale. Email me, ad at adrobles.com to get your copy. Um, also, I told AJ that if uh, you reference this um, this advertisement that you see here, uh, that I would give him a cut of the money because that's what you do with advertisers, right? So there's that. Thank you for considering purchasing. Now, I will also say this. I sent an email out to get everyone's updated addresses so I could send the books out. And uh, Jimmy Song, he, he actually sent me this book on Bitcoin a long time ago, and he, 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 he messaged me back. And in my email, if you saw it, I said I would take Bitcoin, but it was going to cost you $100 for a book, well, essentially 0. .00015 Bitcoin for a book. And he took that to mean that I was pro-Bitcoin. I'm not pro-Bitcoin <laughs> still. I'm not, I don't hate Bitcoin. Uh, but I'm not, uh, oh, I don't own any Bitcoin, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, that, so, but here's the thing, though. This book is really good. Um, Jimmy Song, sent, thank you for sending me this book, Jimmy. I agree with almost all of, like, the first nine chapters, or the first uh, eight chapters, I think. Um, because it's a really good summary about why uh, the Federal Reserve System and fiat currency is evil. It's not just, like, a poor currency. It's not just, like, a bad idea you know, and it's just not like the greatest thing. It's not It's not like it's just not God's best for you. It's actually immoral. The Federal Reserve Bank is an immoral system. And so this book does a great job explaining why that is. Where I don't like the book is where it talks about Bitcoin and how Bitcoin solves those problems. I just don't think it does. Uh, and he does engage with some of the criticisms. I wish that, that more of the book was dedicated to that. Um, but I don't, I'm not, I'm still not buying Bitcoin. I, I, I agree with all the problems that they've identified. I just think that gold is a better solution. I know that people don't like that, but I just think it's the case. Now, um, that being said, this is a good book. It's worth reading. It's worth reading, especially if you don't know where Bitcoiners are coming from when it comes to the problems with our current financial system, because I agree with all of that. I just don't agree that Bitcoin is, you know, that much better. Um, what I will also say is, this is in strong contrast to like the cultists, like guys like Michael Saylor. I mean, that dude is a pagan through and through, and he talks about Bitcoin as if it's God himself. Um, this is a stark contrast to that. If you if you're if you're interested in Bitcoin, but you're kind of you don't want to listen to people like Michael Saylor and some of those like perma bulls that are just like they they look like they they speak of it like a cult leader. Um, you're not going to get that here. There's a little bit of hyperbole where it's like Bitcoin's going to solve all our problems kind of thing. It doesn't go that far, but it, it's got that air to it. This is a good book, though, especially if you're interested in why our financial system is immoral and against God's law. This is a great book for that. So thank you, Jimmy, for the book. I appreciate it. Um, and it's good. It's a good book. So I, I recommend you purchase that, even if I don't agree with the Bitcoin chapters. Now, uh, let's dive into Ruslan again, because we I think we went a whole week without talking about this dude. 
Um, and so uh, let's jump right back into it because I was having a good time with it. I think a lot of you guys were as well. I've been getting a lot of comments, not only on the channel, but also private comments about uh, Ruslan himself and why he's so popular and why he's so effective. I can easily see why he's so effective. He's like he's a likable guy. At least it seems that way on video and he's engaging. So I can understand that. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's go further into this and have a great time. Are these systems of oppression? You're giving me the benefit of the doubt. I'm that giving the you the benefit of the doubt. Like was we have to. Like sure. what is the answer? Hold on. Let me get my uh, let me get my uh, hat here because you know when you're dealing in the hip hop world, you gotta look hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop, hip hop. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Because because I my, my answer yeah. is you know for 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 example um. On the drug war, I can just go back to scripture and say, well, God only says the government is to punish those who do evil to mainly to others. Mm -hmm. And it, there's no crime unless there's a victim. Right. So that the scriptures yeah. would you that, would you be would you be for the decriminalization of drugs? To, total side conversation. That's not like a gotcha question. The decriminalization or criminalization? Yeah. Decriminalization. Of yeah, drugs. I'm for decriminalization. OK. Respect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, um, you're, like I, a, but, you're like a libertarian through and through. This is very refreshing. But Respect. I'm not. But I'm not, this though, because this cause, is important because a lot of people ask me about this as well. And um, I'm not a libertarian either, although there's a lot of alignment with some of the things that we believe. But there's a fatal flaw in libertarianism. So let's hear Marcus Cause, out. Because my because I think uh, the the non-aggression principle, for example, that libertarians hold to uh -huh. um, is is not enforceable or meaningful at all without the first table of the law right so love god okay. right so love god honor the sabbath keep it holy honor sure. your father and mother like sure. first table of the law and then you get to the non-aggression principle or like all these sort of don't steal don't like right oh got you okay so, okay yeah so so the non-aggression principle just says you know don't do harm to others or, or love thy neighbor really mm -hmm. well love thy neighbor makes no sense unless you love god first right with all your heart soul mind strength and then Right. So you have a reference yeah, for God. So this is why you got to have a, a law system that that has a standard for knowing what harming your neighbor is. And once you harm your neighbor, how do you adjudicate how that how that happens? And so libertarianism, it's it's just, you know, it, it, secular libertarianism. Let me say this, because Christian libertarians often do derive this from the law of God. I have no beef with with Christian libertarianism, but secular libertarianism has no standard for that. So the non-aggression principle there's no meaning. There's no. There's no anchor to it. If you're not following the first table of the law first, that's got to be first. Loving God and loving your neighbor has to be first. Keeping the Sabbath holy, the whole thing. Uh, it's it, you have to take it all. You, you can't just nibble around the edges and make a libertarian paradise. It doesn't work that way. Why well, okay. I'm not libertarian, and I also would say um, like there are moral things like adultery should be a criminal offense, homosexuality criminal offense, all these sort of things. Sorry. <laughs> No, that that was that's actually not what you do. It's that it's that sound where it's like uh like the DJ stops. What'd you say, Marcus? Homosexuality, adultery, that should be a criminal offense. Well, let's find out what Ruslan has to think about that. Because we see this in scripture, and so like these these are the, these are the things where I would disagree on theonomy. Uh, not this is where I would disagree on libertarianism. And so hold on, hold on. Be, 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 before we, before we get into the solutions, I gotta, I gotta pull on that he, thread. He, of it. he can't even believe it. Like Ruslan's mind is blown because to Ruslan in his universe. And frankly, guys, like there's a lot of people that, that think this way as well. And I really do. I, I, let me just say this with as much tenderness as I can muster. Cause I'm a really tender guy. <laughs> but um, if your reaction to hearing the law of God uh, even in the Old Testament, even even thinking that it was that's for the Old Testament, not for today. But if your reaction is like this revulsion, like I can't even believe that you just said that, how barbaric that is. I really do think you need to check yourself because God's law is not barbaric and it wasn't barbaric back then either. So you see them. So you see what I'm saying? If you get this kind of visceral reaction, I kind of understand that because I was I, you know, I grew up in public school as well. Uh, but when you hear that adultery should be criminalized, homosexuality should be criminalized, like se seriously, that's not my position. That's God's position. I'm just the creature. He's the creator. He tells me what's what, and I just have to do what he says. That Like, it's not my choice. So don't look at me, but I'm just saying, like, if your reaction is, oh, that's a barbaric land, that's barbarian, 
then you're calling God's law from the Old Testament barbaric. It's like it never was barbaric. It's not barbaric now, and it never was then. And I know some people try to make this distinction. Well, it's like, no, it's barbaric now, but but it wasn't then. That doesn't make any sense. Like, it's either barbaric or it's not barbaric. And my position is that it's a very uh, dangerous place to be to be calling God's law barbaric. When God commanded the Israelites in the Old Testament to, to, to criminalize adultery, to criminalize homosexuality, to criminalize these things, that was not barbaric. And if you think it is, I think you need to do some soul searching and some praying and some, and some thinking because um, I, I, I just don't think that you have the right, and I know I don't have the right, to, call, to say to God, what have you done? You know what I mean? I just think I think that we've got too much evidence in the in the in the Bible that the law of God was holy and that Christ uh, followed the law of God to the T and and that's just all there is to it. And so let's just hear Ruslan's reaction because um, this is a reaction of many people, and I think we need to really consider why is it that we react this way. Yeah, More. go ahead. Um, in context of First Corinthians chapter five, yeah, you you think that. Adultery should be illegal. I'm, an, I'm as yeah. anti-adultery as I can get. But in context of First Corinthians chapter five, what but business? You're not as anti-adultery as you could get. And I know that that feels good to say, but you're simply not, because so if you know First Corinthians chapter five, this is the 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 thing where where there was a man in the assembly that was having sex with his fa- his stepmother, right? And Paul even says. Like, this is something that even the pagans don't put up with. Like, even pagans think this is gross. And here is this guy in the church openly having sex with his stepmother. This is unbelievable. And he says, hand him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Now, they didn't execute him because we know they didn't execute him because in 2 Corinthians, he talks about this exact situation and he says, bring him back. He's repented. He's, he's, he's sorry. You know, he's, he's, he's changed his ways. Bring him back into the fold. And so Ruslan's saying here, well, you see, Paul didn't follow the law of God either. And so we shouldn't either. And by the way, I'm as against adultery as you can be. No, you're not. Because here's the thing. God takes adultery so seriously that it's essentially treason. It's treason against the family. And there must be the death penalty for that. So if you uh, commit adultery, that's a serious offense to God. God takes it very seriously. And he commands his people to take it very seriously. It should be criminalized. So therefore, Ruslan and anyone who's listening to this, I'm not trying to make any enemies here, but it's just a fact. If you don't want adultery to be criminalized, then you don't take it as seriously as you possibly could. And I'm not saying this from a, from a position of purity, because if you know anything about my story, I was having a relationship with a married woman before I was a Christian. So I should not be alive right now. I, I, I deserve the death penalty. There's just no question about that. So this is not hypothetical or theoretical for me. I've committed sins worthy of death in my life, okay? So, but the thing is, just because that would have meant, like if, if we had uh, a, a just system of government, I would not be around. Just because that's true, doesn't mean that it's not a just system of, I'm the one that's, that has the problem, not God. I'm the one that needs to change, not God. You see what I'm saying? So I think that, of course, adultery should be criminalized in our country. And he's going to talk about Paul. So let's just hear what he has to say. Is it of yours to judge those in the world? You expel the wicked from among you. How do you make the logical conclusion that then we should outlaw the uh, the, the church? The, the church doesn't set laws. So okay. if, 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 if someone in my church murdered somebody, the government still has a responsibility to send them well hopefully the death penalty right so 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 but that doesn't mean that the 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 murderer can't get repentance um meet meet with the pastor while he's in prison or whatever like that right so so the because the church doesn't set laws so when when i'm speaking of is strictly the role of the government not the function of the church the church is god's agent if you want to find out more about this uh in a very simple easy to understand way uh my book has a chapter on this it's about the government resting on Christ's shoulders. It's a very short, 
and simple chapter to, to tell you, you know, what the role of the government is versus what the role of the church is. It seems like this is the first time Russell's ever heard this. He's kind of furrowing his brow and stuff like that. And I can't blame him because I remember I was probably, I, he, he seems like he might be a little younger than me. I'm not really sure. But I remember that I was, I was an adult when it was the first time I heard this as well. So I don't blame anyone for not understanding this. But you see, Paul uh, believed in the, the different spheres of government, right? He believed in governing yourself. He believed that the church had a government. He believed that there was a civil governing authority. And each of those entities had different uh, purviews, has different air spheres of authority. And the government's sphere of authority is the sword. It's punishing evildoers. That's what it says in Romans 13. The role of the government is to punish evildoers. The role of the church is the keys of the kingdom, right? They're the ones that are preaching the gospel. They're the ones that are binding and loosing. That means that you're either in or you're out. You're, you're a Christian or you're a pagan. Like, they're the ones that make those decisions. And so when Paul said, uh, hand this guy over for the destruction of the flesh, he had no authority to, to execute this guy. No authority. If he were to have done that, that would have been a sin. And likewise, if somebody in my assembly commits murder and they come and they confide in me and they say, A.D., man, like I, I killed this dude and, you know, and uh, what do I do? What or do I do? I how, can I be saved? I would be like, dude, you know, you need to repent of your sins. Christ can cover your uh, your 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 uh, your murder and stuff like that. But I'm going to call the authorities because you need to be handed over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Right. And the authorities have a responsibility in order to do that. So 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 luckily, most murders are still illegal in this country, not all murders, because we're a pretty pagan nation. Even murders legal in this country. But most murders are still illegal. So thankfully, likely the judge and the civil governing authorities would take care of that. Right. Not saying he can't repent, but he still needs to be punished for the evil that he did. Now, in our country and in Rome. That kind of adultery was tolerated, right? Adultery was tolerated. So when I say hand him over for the destruction of the flesh, there's no one to hand him over to because adultery is totally tolerated in the United States. The same thing in Rome. And so he's not going to be executed. Now, I can't then say, well, I'm going to take matters into my own hands and, and, and uh, do, you know, do this execution. No, that would be evil. And Paul likewise acknowledged that, right? It's the same thing if somebody had a plan to uh, to execute justice on abortionists. I would say absolutely not. You can't do that. You're not the civil governing authority. And I would turn them over to, to the authorities if they were planning something something like that. So so the thing is, like, this is this is the point. Like, like we have to understand that that the Bible is way better than we thought it was. And it gives the church and the government distinct and important responsibilities. But they are distinct. And so Roman or sorry, first Corinthians five has nothing to do with the role of the civil governing authority when it comes to adultery. It does have something to do with the role of the church when it comes to civil governing authority. And so it's a non sequitur. It doesn't make any difference uh, what you, you can prove from 1 Corinthians 5 about the role of the church. Um, it doesn't make any difference on what the role of the civil governing authority is. So it's actually not related at all. Um, but anyway, there you go. Of mercy and then... Romans 13 says the government is God's agent of wrath. So they're two separate. You, you, want a, you want a secular government to institute God's laws? No, I want a Christian government to institute God's laws. It's the post-millennial in you. Okay, but so I, you but want... Actually, I do want a secular government to institute God's laws. It, it's, it's not ideal. I prefer a Christian government, of course. But no, I, I want a secular government to institute God's laws. And, and I don't see why that's confusing. Because we have a secular government right now. But of course, I want the government to punish murderers, right? somebody murders i want the government to punish murderers yes i do um you know i want the government to punish people that steal i want the government to, to punish people that extort like obviously yes i do it's better if it's a christian government but yes i do want a secular government to institute god's laws and i want it to be as as close as possible to god's law as we can get that's yes that's exactly what i want want Rislin. A Christian government. I bleed it all out, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's in everything so you want I do. A Christian yeah. government to institute. Well, I law. want Christian men. Christian if that men makes in it, government. If that makes more sense, because I don't want make the church. A, I don't want the church running the government. To make adultery illegal, make fornication illegal, make For sure. pornography illegal. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Wouldn't we be like Saudi Arabia then at that point? Uh, no. And this, and this is a real problem here as well because. Um, again, and a lot of people talk this way, and so let, let me just break out my tenderness again. 
You need to take a good look in the mirror, guys. If you hear God's law, want to institute it these days, and you think Muslim law, oh my goodness, what a bunch of barbarians. Like, you think that God's law is similar to the to the uh, the Quran, not the Quran really. It's more the uh, what, what's the name of the other book that they have? Um, uh, I forget. But the you know the Sunnah? No, not the Sunnah. I don't know. But um, but yeah, it's 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 actually not that similar. And um, the stuff that they get right, they get right because they also use the the Bible as one of their books. And so it's like, you know. But the thing is, like, the guys, like, like, like. It's God's law is not barbaric, and it never was. It wasn't barbaric then, and it's not barbaric now. And if your reaction is to compare it to barbaric law, that's a big problem. And I would suggest a lot of reflection, a lot of prayer, a lot of asking God to 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 to, to, to tell to, to to show you why is it that you. You show a revulsion to God's law when the psalmist shows such a, a, a reverence for it and such a love for it. And we can read Psalm 119, oh, how I love your law, um, but we don't mean it. We don't mean it. That's that's a. It's time to take a good look in the mirror if that's the position that you find yourself in. I am not saying you have to become a theonomist, but these kinds of visceral reactions, I, I would suggest just really meditating and praying about that so no because uh there's a lot i mean there's a lot there's a huge difference but my 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 assumption wouldn't be my assumption wouldn't be well saudi arabia does it then it's wrong my question i'm not making that assumption at all i'm saying yeah 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 is that what you think would be i would say no no you are making that assumption this is what i hate about ruslan like he he doesn't he's 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 just he's so He's like Jello. You can't pin him down. I'm not making that assumption at all. I just think it's just completely crazy. It's like, like you are making that assumption you, 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 that it's if Saudi Arabia does it, then that's something we don't want to do. That is what you're saying. And so, you know, it, I think I think you get my point. <laughs> I, I I would say that God's law is way more gracious than than Saudi Arabia. First off, because 100%. one. You have to be. But that is a government built on his well, laws. Well, no, but look, look. Even in God's law, right? You have to be caught in the act of adultery with two or three witnesses. There has to be two or three eyewitnesses, and they can't be making it up. And if they are lying, like you talk uh-huh. about the Me Too movement, if the witnesses sure. are lying, then they get the penalty they they were trying to throw on the 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 guy they accused. Sure. Right, and then also too, the actual victims have the option to not throw the first stone like that's a principle from the old testament that sure. jesus was saying like so the 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 victim can actually give mercy to the accused mm-hmm. now like you know if i if, if the police come if i call 911 the police come and like there's a robber at my house or whatever and the police take them away even if i refuse to testify or i want to gr- grant forgiveness to that individual um i i'm not the government's still going to enforce wrath on them without any sort like my if i want to enact grace to them like I have no say in it in our government, right? But in 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 the in the Old Testament law, you do, you do though. You can you said in that in your in this this uh, no, post-millennial no, in government, most cases, in once it goes government. once it goes to trial, um, the the government assumes control, even if okay. Uh, you, can, you, you can't drop charges after a certain point in the process. Yeah, is so what you're saying. yeah, you can't drop okay. charges at okay. certain points in the process. Whereas, whereas all the way up to the point where I pick up that stone, I have the option to drop sure. right drop that 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 process. So this I, may I think be one of my first more... times talking to a post millennial who believes all like this in this <laughs> yeah, way. So I think it is his first time because he's he's his mind is blown. Um, guys, like take away nothing else from this video, but just hear me now. If you've stu- stayed with me this long, hear this. God's law is not barbaric. It is, it is mercy personified. Not personified. It is merciful. <laughs> it is merciful because God is merciful. And so, of course, his law will be merciful. You see, like, we, we think, you know, because, like, right now, if you get caught stealing, you go to prison, right? And we think that that's, like, so humane. But, but it, you know, in the Old Testament law, you get caught stealing, you got to pay it back. That's way better. I think we can all agree. Then people go, well, what happens if you can't pay it back? Well, then you become a slave. And people are like, well, that's barbaric. Let's just send him into prison. It's like, no, no, no. That's actually much more humane. And not only is it more humane, but it brings harmony into the situation. You work for me to, 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 to pay off your debt. And we become close because, you know, we're working together and stuff like that. 
and uh, you pay me back, and then it, it's squashed because I'm made whole and then some. And uh, there's a good chance that you've you've learned the the value of a good day's work and that kind of stuff. And like, it's just, it's just there's so many examples of God's law being merciful. By the way, guys, so many of us have bought the lie of the atheist that it's barbaric. Like, and they and they they misinterpret it to make it seem barbaric. There's this one passage. I think I did a video about this. Um, back when I was uh, leaving my, my church, uh, about one of the laws of God that puts a price on people. It says, the price of a man is this, the price of a woman is less, the price of an old person is less. And, and the atheist will go, you see, you see, the Bible thinks that women are valued less, and I can't believe they put a price on people. That's just barbarian. And what, what it is is they get it exactly opposite, because what it is is if you don't you know, do your oath, then you have to pay in order to get out of the oath. And actually, the lower price for women means they have to pay less. It's actually advantaging women. Why would it advantage women? Well, because in those cultures and in many cultures, women don't work. And so they don't have a lot of money. And so why would God charge a high exorbitant fee to get you out of your oath then, uh, if you don't make any money, typically? It's like, so they get it exactly opposite. I would suggest that if your reaction to the law of God is, oh my goodness, that's barbaric, that's barbaric, we don't want to go back there, that was a hellhole, Israel was a hellhole, that kind of thing. My suggestion is that you've probably bought a lot of atheist propaganda about the law. Because the law of God is good. Like, it's desirable. It's holy and righteous and all of those good things, but it's also desirable in contrast to our current law. That's something that you should go away with. The law of God is actually good. So we don't have to just lie when we're singing the Psalms and we're reading Psalm 119. Oh God, how I love your law. So many of us are lying. We actually don't love God's law. There's a good reason why he wrote that because the law of God is actually is good. It's a good thing, guys. Look into it. I ask you know, with as much humility as I can, um, that if you look into God's law and you actually read books about God's law, you will find that it is not only is it holy and righteous and just and all of that kind of stuff, but it's actually more desirable than our current law system. I hope you found this video helpful. God bless.